It's great to be with you. It's Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, today we're talking about a very commonly used class of medications called beta blockers. You might be on them, or you might have just received a script to start taking them. Well, let's find out what they are. Now, beta blockers are a commonly used class of medication, and there are various types of uh, beta blockers that we use, and what they have essentially in common is that the name ends in olol. So you might have, you might be on one called metoprolol or atenolol, propranolol, and there are other more specific ones for the heart muscle itself called nebivolol, bisoprolol, carvedilol, but essentially, these medications act on a particular type of hormone released by our adrenal gland called adrenaline or epinephrine. So the adrenal glands are a small gland that sit above the kidneys in our body and they do respond to stress. And what else, you know, when stress happens in our body, well, we get a heightened amount of this hormone. And the beta blockers block a particular type of receptor in the body called the beta adrenergic receptor. And that's why they're called beta blockers. By blocking this receptor, they inhibit the action of hormones like adrenaline or epinephrine. And by doing that, they have an effect at lowering heart rate and lowering blood pressure. So lowering blood pressure and lowering your heart rate, you can imagine that might be useful if there are conditions that you know cause for example, a high heart rate or arrhythmias when the heart is racing quite fast. And there are various types of arrhythmias, one called atrial fibrillation, other ones called supraventricular tachycardia or ventricular tachycardia. But these arrhythmias are conditions that result in our heart beating quite fast. Well, by blocking this beta receptor, these beta blockers can be quite useful at slowing down the heart rate and also reducing blood pressure. Another effect that these medications have is that they dilate the arteries and the veins in our body. So by dilating the arteries and veins, well, you get more blood flowing. As the artery or as the vessel enlarges, there is more room for more blood to flow, and they can be a useful treatment for patients who have angina. Now, angina results from narrowings or plaque that builds up in the arteries around the heart and that restricts the amount of oxygen and blood getting to the heart muscle well by using beta blockers that again reduce blood pressure reduce heart rate but also dilate or open up the blood vessels you get more blood and that can improve symptoms significantly but it's not exclusively used only for the heart there are other conditions that can benefit from beta blockers. Common ones are a tremor. And there are various causes for why we may have tremors, but there are certain tremors that your doctor may prescribe a beta blocker, and that has been shown to reduce tremor. Migraines are also a common condition that affect many of us in the community. Well, migraines can also sometimes benefit from being on these medications. These medications, as I said, can be used for angina. They can also be used for high blood pressure. So when blood pressure is high, we've got a high amount of this stress hormone of the adrenaline or epinephrine, while well, by blocking that, we can reduce blood pressure successfully. Beta blockers have also been very useful in conditions causing a weakening of the heart muscle. Now, generically, we call this heart failure, not the best term to use, but when the heart is not able to pump appropriately and to allow all the blood to exit the heart, well, beta blockers have definitely been shown to be beneficial, not only in improving symptoms, but also there is what we call a prognostic benefit, that people who are on beta blockers do better than those who are not on beta blockers for conditions that affect the heart muscle or heart failure. 
there is a slightly different type of class of beta blockers that we use in that particular scenario, and they are ones called nebivalol or bisoprolol or carvedilol, and these are a little bit more specific for actions on the heart itself. But again, beta blockers can be very, very useful in that regard. Now, beta blockers are not without side effects. And I think beta blockers are one of the commonly prescribed medications whereby I have several discussions with my patients about them, about why they might be useful, but also the side effects that are experienced by being on beta blockers. So they are not for everybody, but again, you don't stop taking your medication. You please liaise with your cardiologist and doctor to find out whether there might be an alternative if you are not you know, having success by being on these medications. But they can cause some side effects. And again, most people tolerate them very, very well. But by reducing the heart rate, by lowering blood pressure, there may be a sense of lethargy, tiredness, fatigue. That is perhaps one of the most commonly described symptoms. When we start a beta blocker, you just feel flat. You don't have the energy, the get up and go. Now that may improve over time. So we do ask that you do persevere. But again, it's an important consideration, important type of side effect to be aware of to also discuss with your physician. Beta blockers, by acting the way they do, by blocking the beta receptor, can also cause, for example, hands and feet to feel colder. And that is also a commonly described symptom. They may cause some weight gain. Again, not in everybody, but they may be associated with some weight gain. And they also can, in some people, reduce libido. So that's, again, another consideration and another important discussion to have with your doctor. Less common side effects are perhaps contributing to some depression. So again, if you do feel any of these symptoms, very important to speak with your doctor. They are not a good choice for those who might have active asthma. By blocking the beta receptor, it can cause constriction in the lungs and the airways in those people who are susceptible and vulnerable to conditions like asthma. So we are cautious about anybody who has a lung condition, a breathing conditional disorder, whether beta blockers may be the right choice for you. And there may be alternatives that do not have an action on the beta receptor that may be more appropriate. Beta blockers can also have a slight um, impact on those with diabetes. So again, important to consider the diabetic control and keep a close eye on what happens to your blood sugars when you are commenced on a beta blocker. My practice is usually to start off with a very low dose and see how that is tolerated. But again, they are not for everybody in that because they can cause these side effects, it is important to tailor therapy based on the individual and the individual conditions that you are treating. Another less common side effect is that of vivid dreams. And I have certain patients that come and say, look, I've started a beta blocker and, and I'm having these very, very vivid and sometimes frightening dreams. And that can be as a result of beta blockers that may improve with you know, a different type of beta blocker and trying a couple of different variations. But again, important if you do have any of those side effects to please check with your doctor. So beta blockers are a useful class of medication. They, as I said, are used to treat various conditions involving the heart, but also outside the heart. We talked about migraines, we talked about tremors, can be useful in patients who are you know, on several medications and blood pressure continues to be high, then this may be a beneficial addition. Patients who have angina or any heart condition there may benefit from that. And also rhythm issues or fast heart rates and rhythms uh, or arrhythmias that can also benefit from being on a beta blocker. There are some side effects that you need to be aware of. 
So please do consult with your physician and hopefully you found this video useful. And until the next one, bye for now.